Today I'll be explaining to you what remote execute is as a command itself. Remote execute is a command that takes a function or command, which is considered the order, and executes it on a remote client, hence the name remote execute. Code can be ran from one client, sent to the server, and then ran on the specified client's machine. Remote execute is important because it ensures that in a multiplayer environment, all of the commands that are ran are synced to every other player in the server. Some commands only have local effects, and the results will only be shown to the client who ran that command. Now let's consider the syntax. In the syntax, we have the params, remote exec, and then order, target, and jip. What params are, are the order's parameters. Well, the order is whatever function we're trying to run. So if we come here, and we have a bunch of these sample commands here, if we want to convert these to remote exec, what are the parameters of these functions? Well, this is the parameter, this is a parameter, this is a parameter, this is a parameter, all of this is a parameter, this is a parameter, and all of this is a parameter. Everything except for the command itself are the parameters for that command. So when it comes to remote exec, we're taking the order's parameters and putting it out front. This can either be done through an array, or it can be done without one if there's only one. So if there's only one parameter, like here in hint, we don't need to have an array. So we, what we can do to convert this is to do my test hint, which is the parameter that we have here, remote execute, hint, which is the command that we're trying to run here. And we hint, and we hint, and then this would be a functioning remote execute command. If you ran this code here, the hint would apply on all clients, including the server. Now this is simple. Creating a basic remote execute with the parameters and the order, that's very simple. But the targets in the JIP are what most people find issues with. First, let's cover targets. As we can see here, yeah, it's an optional parameter. We don't have to put it here, but the default is zero. Well, what does zero do to it? A target can be a number of different things. It can be a number, like we see here, or it can be zero, which means it'll execute on everyone, including the server, two, meaning it'll only execute on the server, and negative two, meaning that it'll only execute on every client, but not the server. Other number, you'll never have to actually use, so don't worry about this. Now that we've explained the number targets, let's explain the rest of this. Putting an object in the target means that the code or order will be ran specifically on that object, whether that's a player, a street lamp, whatever you're running it on, it'll execute on that object. A string can be uh, used for a variable name. So if you have an object save as, saved as a variable, you can execute it on there. But most of the time, you're not going to do this. Instead, you'll do this with object. I've, I don't think I've ever used a string. Side means if you set a side like west, which is blue for, east, op for, independent, which is AAF, or civilian, which is civilians. It'll execute on all players that are on that side. And then group, you can, you can assume the same thing, pretty much, except instead of the entire sign, it's the specific group. Then you can make an array of all of these different uh, things here and have it execute on all of those. So you can have it execute on a list of objects or a list of uh, all the sides, whatever you want to do there. Now for the hardest part that a lot of people have issues with. We're going to explain what JIP is. So JIP stands for Join in Progress, which means that if JIP is enabled on an order, it'll be ran on players who join after that order has been ran. So JIP could be a couple things. It could be Boolean, which means that it'll be true or false, which means if it's true, it'll run no matter what anytime a, s a player joins the server after that order has been given. A string, which is basically setting a variable name for the actual join in progress queue position, which lets you overwrite it later on, which is very useful for a lot of scripts, and I would encourage people to use uh, in specific circumstances. However, the next option, object, group, or net ID, which we'll ignore net ID because you don't really need to use that one. An object or a group, that is what you should be using a majority of the time because it makes the order happen on players who join after it's been ran only if that object still exists or if that group still exists. Let's say, like we have our example here, on running this add action onto this cursor target. Let's convert it real quick. So first, we, since there's more than one parameter, we're making an array. The first one is cursor target, and the second one would be 
the array of the parameters here. So we'll just copy paste it so I don't have to type it out. Then we have remote execute and then the command. So add action. Who do we want this to run on? Everyone, including the server. And when do we want this to be joined in progress? Well, as long as the cursor target exists, which is the object in front of you that you're adding the ad action to, as long as this exists, we want this order to run so that way people can get the action every time they join, so long as this object exists. Then, if we were to go ahead and delete this object, this code wouldn't run anymore, and then we don't have extra code clogging the queue, making the server lag, and it's better for performance and optimization. Now, to explain using remote execute and JIP with a string, what we'll do here is we'll convert this spawn function. So here we have the parameters. There's more than one. One, two. So we're going to have to make an array. And then the first part is an array, so player and an array. And then we have the code, so we'll go ahead and do that so it's a little easier to read. There we go. So now we have the parameter for the remote execute set up. Now, remote execute, then the command, spawn, zero, and we'll have some string here. Remove my weapon. So, let's say we don't want this to run anymore whenever, I, whenever players join the server. But if we want to overwrite this, all we have to do is just create an empty one like this. So see, we have the uh, we have the array here with the player inside of it. If we delete this, just leave an empty array, and then delete everything in here, then we get empty curly braces. Now, we can just take the rest of this and paste it right here. Now, if we ran this, the order would run. But if we run this, after this has been ran, this order here will stop running. It won't run anymore because it's been overwritten by this command here. As the last thing, I'll convert one more thing to remote execute so you guys can try to understand how this is done. So here we have set damage. Again, we have two parameters, so we're going to create an array. Our first parameter is player. Since it's just by itself, we'll have it by itself. And then we have the number at the end, 0 0.5. Done. Our parameters are done. Now we'll put remote execute, set damage, and then the target. We'll just do zero. I hope that this explanation was good enough and that people are understanding how this works and what to do for calling remote execute functions. And I hope that this will decrease the amount of issues we're having currently with uh, JIP and remote execute uh, with a lot of novice scripters. If this helped you, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to be creating a lot more tutorials, especially now that I've fixed my microphone and it's not cutting in and out. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.